children. They are our future. One day they will achieve great things. But while they are still young, they are cute. They give us joy. But let's be honest, they are a little clumsy. I mean, look at them. They are barely able to count to five and they can't make a coherent sentence. That is why we say the future, not the present, belongs to them. But jokes aside, young children develop very rapidly and have an amazing ability to learn. Over the years, they improve motoric abilities, crawling, walking and biking. They learn one or more languages. They learn to count, calculate and a little bit later do complex math. You might think, with the development of all these abilities, the brain grows gradually and builds more and more connections over time. However, surprisingly, that is not the case. A two-year-old has many more connections in the brain than you and I. So what's going on there? The neurons in our brain, which are the brain cells responsible for all our actions, feelings and perceptions, are heavily connected with each other. We have approximately 86 billion neurons. And each neuron has thousands of connections with other neurons. The point where one neuron is connected to another neuron is called a synapse. Here there is an exchange of chemicals. And so this is the point where a signal travels from one neuron to another. In the first two years of our lifespan, brain size increases drastically. From an average of 370 cubic centimeters at birth to 1100 cubic centimeters at the age of two, which is an increase of almost 200%. Even more astonishingly, with that size, a toddler's brain is already at 80 or 85% of an adult's brain size. In those first two years, there is an explosion of connections in the brain. Interestingly, this increase in the amount of connections contributes strongly to the actual size of the brain, because a newborn has roughly as many neurons as an adult. So the size is more determined by the connections than by the amount of neurons. So, there is a rapid increase in the number of connections. As such, a toddler's brain has more connections than it actually needs, and also more connection than an adult has. Now the crucial part is that a lot of these connections will disappear at a later age. And this process is called synaptic pruning. The exact number of connections per neuron and how many of these connections appear and disappear depends on a specific brain region. Also, at which age this process happens is also different per brain region. For example, synaptic pruning happens first in the sensory regions, such as the visual cortex. Here, a 12-month-old baby has approximately 560 million connections per cubic millimeter. This is one and a half times more than that of an adult who have about 380 million connections per cubic millimeter. A little bit weird, isn't it? A baby or a toddler is obviously not as smart or as skilled as an adult. So these connections cannot be functional. Let's have a look at synaptic pruning in more detail. Before birth, the number of neurons expands rapidly and is largely completed at the time of birth. The same is not true for the number of connections. Although during the prenatal period connections between neurons have been formed, this goes in overdrive after birth. First in sensory areas including visual and auditory cortex, then in motor areas and finally in other parts of the cortex. Although this period in brain development is famous for the build-up of neural connections, which is referred to as synaptogenesis, the formation of new synapses happens throughout life, albeit at a much smaller rate later in life. The generation 
of new synapses is part of a mechanism called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity refers to the changes in neuronal structures and is strongly related to learning. If you learn something new, your brain changes. This change is neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity can occur in different forms. The one form that occurs the most is not the formation of new synapses, but rather the strengthening of existing synapses. This process happens all the time, basically for every new experience, and is still happening in adults. Synaptogenesis is also a form of neuroplasticity, and also occurs in adults, but it is certainly not as prevalent as in the first few years of life. Importantly, however, synaptogenesis and the strengthening of synapses go hand in hand. If you have many loose connections that don't go anywhere, then that is not going to give you any benefit. This is also the case in the brain development of a child. The strategy of our brain is to make a huge number of connections and then see which ones stick. That is, connections that are used will be strengthened and remain, whereas useless connections disappear again. The remaining connections are partially determined by genes and partially by experiences and things the child learns. So yes, a toddler's brain has more connections, but these are not all useful. Quite the opposite. The brain still needs to figure out which of these connections make sense. Let's look at an example of the neuromuscular junction on which a lot of research has been done. The neuromuscular junction is the connection between motor neurons and muscle cells. The motor neurons are important for executing movement and the muscle cells directly connect to the muscle and cause them to contract. At an early age, muscle cells are connected to and receive signals from multiple motor neurons. This means that there are connections that are redundant. Over time, these redundant connections weaken and only a single connection remains. And this remaining connection is strengthened. Also, other cells, called Schwann cells, provide the remaining connection with a myelin sheet, which basically insulates the axon and thus improves signal conduction. So why this entire process of synaptogenesis followed by synaptic pruning? Well, an overabundance of connections, of which only a few useful ones remain, gives the brain the most flexibility in learning new skills. This is why young children learn fast and almost effortlessly. For example, a child can learn a second or third language at a young age, whereas this is much harder at a later age. Synaptic pruning gradually decreases over time, but continues into adolescence. Interestingly, some research has shown that abnormal synaptic pruning may be related to disorders such as schizophrenia and autism spectrum disorder. However, more research on that front is required to show a definitive link. So, this was our introduction into synaptic pruning and the answer to the question of why toddlers have more connections in the brain than an adult does. Obviously, we only scratch the surface of this topic. An in-depth explanation would take multiple hours. Nevertheless, we hope you enjoyed this video and we hope to see you the next time. Bye bye.